Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Football Daily Weekly. Pleasure to have you with us. Lawrence is here, Hello. our regular. Lovely to have you back. Looking, Not regular, but yeah. Looking beardy. And uh, Adam from Blue Moon Rising TV. I love it. Oh, Adam, not the best week you could have come on the show. Nope. But nope. we'll get to that in yeah. just a second. Um, Squawker Dave sent you this. <laughs> well, yeah, what are the things we learned on the weekend's footballing action? First up, Pellegrini, is his, are his days numbered, bruv? Is his days numbered? Bruv. Um, uh, Manchester United, they beat Man City 4 2 at Old Trafford Lawrence. Mm -hmm. That's six league wins on the bounce for Louis Van Hull's men. Were you impressed by the Red Devils? Yeah, I've been impressed by the Red Devils for a little while. For about six games. Now they have a structure within the side which works really well in the Premier League. Mm. Um, I don't know why it's taken Louis van Gaal so long to find that. Um, maybe it's because of injuries. Maybe it's because Carrick was out. They didn't know where to play Herrera. Very often he played midfield too or probably the wrong formation. And now they've got some, some players in there that just give them a very solid back line in, in terms of Blint, Carrick sitting just in front of it and Herrera there. And then that allows the likes of Ashley Young and whoever matter. else they put, pro probably matter, to bomb down one side. And they tend to just exploit that one side that both those players are um, making their runs on. Mm. And it's, I mean, it works ridiculously well against uh, against. City. Yeah, I mean, Van Gaal's a notorious slow starter with his teams, but it certainly seems to be clicking at the, at the business end of the season. But Adam, as a Manchester City fan, you didn't enjoy... Well, you may have enjoyed the first 15 minutes. Yeah, we're quite good at being good in the first 15 minutes. Yeah. But again, we went a goal up. And mm. we crumbled. We absolutely fell apart. And we made it very, very easy for United yesterday. We, everything was so predictable. Yeah. Again, we're too slow, too predictable. But what do you think went wrong? Because Pellegrini's often been accused in some of the big games of playing a, almost like a 4-4-2 with two up front and, and he loses the midfield. But even with five in there, they still didn't look anywhere near that Manchester United midfield. I don't think we were up for the battle at all. Mm. And that, that was the most disappointing thing, wasn't it, that we got beat 4-2 and it possibly could have been more, it was that there was no spirit within the side. Yeah. It, one of the worst things I've seen this season, we scored the second, eight minutes left, Carrick's had to go off, ten men, and they walked back to the halfway line. Mm. They didn't really care. I mean, but do you think that will cost Pellegrini his job, this, this run of results, and ultimately what looks like will be a poor place? It, yeah, yeah. I mean, if the club have a replacement for him, I don't think there's any question, and I think he will go. Yeah, um, which is a shame, really. I, I like the guy, but it looks like the players aren't playing for him, and that's that's a bit of a. Worry. But do you think that's maybe taken out? It's a short-term fix for what is a long-term problem. Well, quite possibly. But do you think Manchester City will finish in the top four? Oh yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's slightly definitely top four. But would fourth would a fourth place finish? I mean, that's not good enough, is it really? Not considering really. Considering the lead they had over Arsenal, Manchester. United. Also considering the product, I think that they're trying to build. They're trying to market themselves as you know people who are able to compete with right. the best in the league. And if you finish fourth, you're much more like a. Liverpool than you are like a Chelsea or a Manchester United status. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we will finish top four and funnily enough we now want Chelsea to beat United and Arsenal and, yeah. and if they do then you never know we might we might be able to jump in a third. I don't think second's possible now. Alan Pardew could be manager of the season gentlemen mm -hmm. after being hounded out of Newcastle United. He's gone to Crystal Palace where he used to play obviously. He's been welcomed with open arms and he is delivering results. Four straight Premier League wins. Mm -hmm. Only Arsenal have have won more points than him when it, since he's taken over at Palace, I believe. At 25 points since taking over at Palace. Remarkable, mm. Lawrence. It's a good record, although he has dropped 11. Let's put it that way as well. That's no, right. no, I'm kidding. It's 25, 25 points. points out of 36 with Crystal Palace. With Crystal Palace. They were in the bottom three when he took over, and now they're, they're dreaming. Not dreaming, they're, they're realistically hoping for a top half finish. He's ignited, yeah, which is exactly what Crystal Palace really wanted to do this season, is solidify their place in the Premier League mm. and begin to build on that. And not only that, but ignite the form of Balassi, Zaha... Uh, Glenn Murray, and not only that, but build a very solid back line as well and uh, make a midfield which can distribute the ball out to the right guys. Um, it, can I just say it does strike me somewhat of engaging with basically one really huge burning ego mm -hmm. just igniting all the other egos around him. Yep. And, you know, but because essentially Balassi, Zaha and Murray are all, you know, uh, quite fragile front line guys who when they've got their head in the game then it's amazing Zaha well, was so fragile with Glenn Murray a terrible injury no no but I'm talking about I'm talking about mentally here I mean yeah. you know um, Zaha went to United and I, maybe it's harsh to describe it as fragile mm. but it's fragile in the nicest sense if that makes sense okay um, that you know, essentially you want to engage their ego and an ego is something that is incredibly fragile and so you know Pardiola, Pardiola comes in 
burning bright as he is, lights everyone up. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. And I think a lot of people are making this point is that, you know, that fire burns for a while, but how long can you keep it going for? Can that go for a whole season? And is it possible to engage those egos for such a long time? Does he need to? And, in, you know, we saw this at, uh, saw this at Newcastle, playing Hatton Ben Arthur, players like that. It was only so long that he could keep them going before that dropped off. And so you get the initial boost mm. with Pardew, but then after a while, that drops off. I mean, it's not necessarily his fault, though, if a player like Ben Arthur goes able. But uh, at Palace, you know, Glenn Murray was coming back from his injury. He's scoring goals. Yannick Velassi had a lovely old uh, afternoon <laughs> at Sunderland, didn't he? Let's Is it 11 honest. minutes? It's got, yeah, one yeah. of the quickest hat-tricks in, in the league. He also got the assist for the, for 11, the Murray. 11 goal. minutes under an assist. Yeah, it won yeah. for your dream team that weekend if you yeah. had Velassi. What do you think of Pardew no, at uh, Palace, Adam? Do you think he's got the longevity, which Lawrence is perhaps a little bit sceptical? I think of? that's the problem. We'll know next season. He's, he's done really well. Like he's, he's done fantastic. Tell me now. Tell me now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, I don't know. I quite, I don't mind Palace, but I don't really like Pardew. But, exactly. That's the um, that's the quandary, isn't it? Will yeah. the players? I think that's the view of the nation, that, isn't it? Really? Will, but will the players get round <laughs> to that a bit like at Newcastle, mm. where obviously there was friction there? Will the players oh, at Palace? But then actually, easy. But but actually, <laughs> you know, if you watch some of the, the Newcastle games when they were under pressure, when the players scored and all the rest of it, they actually celebrate with the manager. Yeah. So so yeah. that that kind of suggestion that that his ego trumps theirs or, or whatever it is, they, they, they seem to quite like... It, but it's nothing to do with players. trumping it. It's to do with the fact that it, when he engages it, then it go, then it's like, brilliant, yeah, he's done this. And in that moment, there's this sort of, there's an incredible elation, obviously you've achieved. But in the long run, I'm saying, how sustainable is that? How sustainable? I don't know if he will win manager of the season anyway. I don't yeah. know. Who there will? Are other, I've got Ronald Koeman. Ooh. Or, the if Louis van Gaal turns it around, yeah. Louis van Gaal. And wins the league. Yeah, I, I had you all along. He's like a pool shark. He sucks <laughs> you in and then he's like, watch this. <laughs> okay. Hull City are in real trouble, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need me to tell you that. The league table will. Um, they are one place above the relegation zone. The promoted sides, QPR, Leicester and Burnley, obviously occupy those three slots in the relegation zone. But Hull, oh dearie me, Lawrence, they're not doing so well at the moment. They lost 2-0 against Southampton on the weekend. Do you think they will go down? They've got a horrendous run in. They've still got to play Liverpool, Manchester United, Spurs, Arsenal. Exactly, yeah. Although um, quite a few teams have awkward run-ins at best. True. Um, but I do think that if, if the impetus maybe sits with the likes of even QPR, who held out against Chelsea for a very long time. They were unlucky, weren't they? Yeah. Um, and like we say, you know, Burnley, uh, one of those resilient sides that are possibly still in the mix. And one win basically takes any of these guys out of the relegation zone and puts Hull City in there. Um, the problem being that Hull City have got a load of players who just don't seem to be yeah. able to play together right now. They've got to look at Sunderland as well. I mean, I mean they're, they're in trouble and they're sat just above Hull. Like you say, I think there's about five teams in there. I think Villa have just about Villa thrown should, themselves they out should, with that. With a striker like Benton. Yeah, okay, it know, looks they like they've thrown be. themselves out. But Hull have bought some big players, mm. spent a lot of money. Hernandez, he, yeah. was he 10 million quid? Jelovic as well. Jelovic. Yeah. They've, they've got some decent players, but it just doesn't seem to have worked. At all, all season. Yeah, they're not they're not doing so well. I mean, you had Huddleston and, and Livermore were putting yeah. in good performances and whatnot. And even against Southampton, they didn't look diabolical. Yeah. It's a difficult place to go. Um, they, they still created a few opportunities. Aluko looked pretty lively as well. Yeah. So it, it, in those kind of terms, you would think, well, actually, they might have just enough firepower to, to stay up. But then you could make cases for any other team down there. Exactly. Well. I mean, look at Leicester, the way they've suddenly started playing as well. Burnley, yeah. much more... Resistance, perhaps. And that's the point where you'd say, well, who's the impetus with, who's the form with? Mm. And maybe it's not Hull at the moment. Hull, and although Aston Villa still have to play Liverpool and City, although they're probably the best two teams to play in the top six or yeah. seven right now, right? Um, so everyone's got a difficult run-in, but it's also who you have a difficult run-in with. If it's with Arsenal and United, mm. it's harder than City and Liverpool. I think as well, the, I think the last game of the season, I think Burnley play Villa, which should be a... Mm. That, that could be the one which, which sorts things out. But and Tim Sherwood is an utter wanker, isn't he? So he would, <laughs> he, would, he would love to put someone down. Even if they're safe, he'll be like, got out there and razz them. They? Sorry, yeah. lads, eh? Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was, oh, the captain got the bloody cream up. Dear, and easy. That's yeah. enough. Uh, OK, well, yeah, Hull are in trouble. we better leave that there. In Serie A, Lazio could finish second. We mm. thought it was going to be Roma, because obviously they've dropped off quite a lot uh, from their title running with Juventus since that Derby Day draw a couple of months ago now, yeah. or maybe three months ago now. Uh, but yeah, Lazio, they won 4-0 against Empoli on the weekend. They've overtaken Roma, and that means big trouble for, for Roma. Didn't they? Their fans confronted their players and said, if Lazio overtake us in the league, 
something bad will happen. Something bad will definitely happen. In an Italian accent. Indeed, yeah. and, and in Italian, presumably. But yeah. uh, Lazio, Lawrence, you've been impressed by the way they've uh, great surged run of form. up the league. Yeah, great run of form. Um, and who's who's been at the, the spearhead of that, especially this weekend? Miroslav Klose. Hey. How old is Miroslav Still. Klose? Yeah. Still. Still. I don't think he, have, he has an age. It's, <laughs> he's ageless. In the Italian league, older uh, strikers can thrive. Di Natale, um, we've seen this. Di Natale. Inzaghi just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, back to uh, Lazio. back to Lazio and and the fact that uh, you know they, they put four past Empoli at the weekend um, and I think they're keeping everything in perspective. It's been a great run of form for them. I think they've won eight in a row now. Um, and uh, that I mean uh, Pioli was saying over the weekend, basically there's still 24 points left and we're only one mm. point ahead of Roma. Mm. If there's 24 points left, we've we've got to nail those down. Yeah. And they still have to play Roma in another derby. Mm -hmm. So that's probably going to be quite be a huge. critical game. Um, in, indeed, yeah. I just yeah. hope that with Lazio, they've got such a good squad, some great young players. I hope they can keep hold of them. I sure. think that's going to be a thing in the summer. They've got like Felipe Anderson. Yeah. There's going to be Premier League clubs, if not La Liga clubs, other clubs knocking on his door. But I've I've been impressed with them when I've seen them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't wait for that Lazio Roma game. I just hope these bad things don't happen. I mean, it was, it was that's the penultimate game of the season, I think, as well. Is that yeah. right? Well, right. It, was, it was a decent derby last time, but since that derby, Roma dropped away from their title challenge with Juventus. Uh, and since going out of the Champions League, maybe mm. that had a bit of a knock-on effect. But they've drawn so many games, and their mm. fans are extremely disappointed, obviously, because they, they should have been odds-on for at least second. Mm -hmm. uh, and and they've, they've they've dropped off quite severely. Well, look at the start of the season. We were all talking about Roma, perhaps, yeah. winning the league and whatever. But they have dropped off so much. You can, you can see why the fans would be annoyed. I mean, mm. City have done something similar mm. in England, and it, it's, it must be frustrating because there was a chance of a title running, and now the main rivals, it's just a parallel to England, this. <laughs> yeah, the main right. rivals come over and leapfrog them. Mm. And I don't know what Roma's running's like, but that, that derby is going to be, yeah. it could be the second place. In the league of the race, for third and fourth spot is hotting up, mm. gentlemen. Uh, we saw Sevilla get a good uh, point against Barcelona at the weekend. Atletico Madrid also drew. Uh, Dropping points, you would say, perhaps, for Atleti, the champions. Um, and they've, you know, Sevilla and Valencia are right in there with them, fighting for that. Uh, obviously, Atleti are third at the moment. But the champions could drop out and finish fifth, Adam. Would that, that would be a disaster for That would them. be a massive disaster. I mean... How good were they last season to, to yeah. break that mould of Barcelona and Real Madrid? Mm. And even at points this season, they were right up there. But yeah. they've dropped off. And now you've got Valencia who are coming up and coming through very quietly as well. Mm. They seem to be picking off all the smaller teams and just kind of gradually going up. Then you've got Sevilla taking a point from Barca being 2-0 down. Mm. But Atletico just seem to have stagnated. Mm -hmm. And maybe, pe maybe teams have started working them out now. Because we know how they played last season and they're playing the same system again. And you've got to think for Simeone as well. Fifth place will not be good enough for Atletico this year. No. He has signed his new contract, so he's well insured of that place. But um, sure. I mean, they did also somewhat suffer, uh, but to a slightly lesser extent last season, with just exhaustion. Well, I was about yeah. to say that they do yeah. tire, don't they? They're still in the Champions League, system. though. They've got that Madrid uh, derby coming yeah, up. Yeah, which uh, you know, was a huge kick on for them mm. uh, last season. I think really sort of served them um, quite well. And, and then you also have to say, I think that very often, you know, the, the, these two at the top are superpowers within mm -hmm. that league and financially they're so much better off than everyone else and over the years we've seen this happen time and time again is that teams have challenged uh, Villarreal did it a few years ago Rafa Benitez at Valencia did it as well they go up and then because of the competition in the league they fall back down because financially they can't keep up all those different kind of things so it'd be a shame to see Atletico fall away at this point and stop challenging mm. because if they were to finish mm. high this season finish third and have a solid finish there they could attract the type of talent or kick on from there and then solidify their play. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's your lot for this week. Thank you very much to Lawrence McKenna. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to Adam from Blue Moon Rising TV, the best Manchester City fan channel out there. So get your peepers on that. And we'll see you next time. We love it.